It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. Hello, are we here? We're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special Christmas. Uh, I am Mike Martin, one of the uh, cast here of Stitch of Fate, the storyteller in particular. And as always, I am joined by my four players. Dot, oh God, you have Duke there. I almost said your real name. Bub, and Josh, and Mark. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, it's oh, pretty good. Good, good. It's going great. <laughs> yeah, already in character. Good, good, good. Today is, is going to be a Christmas special. For those of you who might have already listened to the podcast, uh, this is taking place about eight years prior to season one. So if you have not watched the show and are worried about being confused, don't worry. We got you covered there. And if you're part of the, are, are familiar with the show and wanted more of that 10 year history that our coterie had before the show started, this is going to be a little bit of that for you. Other than that, I don't really have much else to announce. Is there anything the four of you want to hit cover before we just kind of dive in? Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy holidays. Yes. That, but slightly less intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Max is only intimidating to those who don't know him. That's true. So let's set the scene, bring things down, rein it in, and see what our coterie is up to. As the camera fades in, the background sounds of New York's busy streets in the early 2010s fills the ears, honking horns and sirens, mixed with gentle snow covering buildings, streets, and sidewalks among those who drive and walk about. Not a worrying amount, but a gentle dusting to truly bring an air of the holidays to the city. And I say that because tonight is Christmas Eve as the camera brings itself down to street level and it surrounds itself with buildings on each side and the sounds of cars, wheels passing by and people chatter on the sidewalks fill our ears, hanging from the street lights and from windows and some doors are wreaths, lights, and all manner of holiday celebration. But as we peel from downtown and we get further away from those busy streets, the buildings are a place with your more melancholic, abandoned, the brick buildings with boarded up windows, broken windows, and doors removed from their hinges. On the streets you see much more broken bottles and bags of trash, some ripped open, some just tossed on the side, deteriorating from the weather as days and weeks go by before they're ever touched. But soon as the camera pulls around a corner, a neon light illuminates through that gentle snow. It flickers in a bright pink, and as it approaches those beautiful double doors and the building itself stands out amongst the rest. Surrounded by a sea of mundane is a pinnacle of some would say entertainment, others would simply call it escape. Vera, we approach and are sat in front of your club. For the holidays, however, I imagine it looks a little different. So for those who are and aren't familiar with Vera's club, what are our eyes looking at this evening? So it's a small building wedged between two much larger old brick buildings of the city, but it is a refurbished vaudeville theater. The front is flat, but it has that little ticket booth that's not really used anymore. And uh, as you enter the space, it's been redone to match this kind of 1920s, deep, dark uh, cigar lounge vibe. The stage is still there, the seats are out, there's a dance floor, and the upper mezzanine has been converted into a drinking and smoking lounge for the VIPs. But at Christmas, Vera has taken it a step further. There are wreaths and uh, garland and lights, but everything has been sprayed chroma, like oil colored. It is juxtaposing this kind of deep dark wood. Uh, Everything drips with this kind of oily essence, but it is her way. It suits Vera rather well. And as the doors fly open and the sounds of the city fade and give way to the sounds of the club, it becomes obvious to those that even on Christmas Eve, Vera's club does not stop. 
it's around 10.30 at night, only an hour and a half before truly Christmas arrives, and there are people mashed together, drinking, filled with smoke, pressed up against one another, almost as though they were there to keep each other warm in this club, though the heat levels in here are much higher than most find comfortable. And the camera pushes by them, spreading the uh, spreading, s s zooming between their legs, not spreading between their legs, zooming between their legs as the bodies are mashed. Though there is some leg spreading happening in the club as dancing is happening, don't get me wrong. That's true. It is the holidays, everybody. It is the holidays <laughs> at Vera's in particular. And as we push past all of those who are dancing on the dance floor back through double doors, we find a very simple steel door that sits slightly out of place with the aesthetic of even the back rooms. As we leave the dance floor, it's clear Vera pays grand attention to even the smallest of details where even the public eyes don't get to see how clean and organized and well-kept everything is. That's why the steel door sticks out. And as we slip under the steel door down some stairs, the sounds of the club become more a thumping echo. And we hear light chatter is a room down the stairs off to the right that's mostly empty, concrete, and in the back a small desk with a chair. And in that desk, on that chair, sits a rather plain-looking individual with glasses and a well-kept mustache and piercing blue eyes as he fiddles very plainly with a small gift on the desk. But scattered throughout the room as the camera pulls itself to the corner, we see the other three as well. Vera is having light conversation in her complete leather-clad outfit, always dressed to the nines, no matter where or what time it is, chatting with somebody who looks like he probably changed a month and a half ago, but those clothes just feel so good, even though they smell so bad. He's laughing, having a conversation, and it's hard to tell whether Vera is annoyed or simply just enduring. But beyond that, even further against the wall, kind of fiddling with, I imagine, a gift bag of a sort, dressed in a bathrobe, exposing all of his glorious bat-like features, his piercing yellow eyes, is our dear Nosferatu Maxwell, keeping to himself but listening in. As the sounds pick up and become more defined, what is it that Vera and Sean are babbling about as they are gathering together for tonight to celebrate the holidays? This was Sean's idea, of course. So you're telling me you don't know what an Xbox is? Uh, that, uh, that, that is what I'm saying. You've got a really exciting year ahead of you. Why? It's a secret. That's the whole point. So what does it do, the Xbox? Oh, what doesn't it do? So, uh, basically, if, uh, if, you, if you can think of any entertainment you want, you find it on this little box. And then, uh, I, I mean, other people like PlayStation, but like, <laughs> you get better games on the Xbox. That's all I'm saying. So uh, keep that in mind for later. As Sean kind of wags his finger at you and he excitedly plays with a small, like rectangular gift wrapped up in his hand. Max, as he stares, uh, he, he clearly was assigned the gift for Sean. And as the kind of awkward silence between Vera and Sean settles, Vera clearly not understanding why Sean is so excited. It's about time. The gift giving is, uh, you've been putting it off too long. And I imagine Max kind of steps forward with his gift in a, in a bag or perhaps wrapped. How, how does Max handle the particular gift that he has for Sean? Uh, you may notice that uh, Max is getting a little ready here. He got you know, if I gotta play Sandy Claus, I might as well look the part, right? Okay, here you go. <laughs> so as the silence settles, you actually hear Max go, well, if I gotta play Sandy Claus, and he just kind of reaches into his robe and pulls out the Santa hat. Max. Yeah, I should note, this: uh, the Sandy Claus hat that he's wearing, uh, it's a lot dirtier than the one you see here. It uh, looks like it might have been uh, taken from... Uh, a, uh, you know, a Salvation Army Santa, maybe, uh, that, that had seen better days. But, uh, you know, I got it on my head. It doesn't really fit because my head is a lot bigger than, uh, say, the average melon. So, uh, I got this on. And, uh, in a brown paper bag, it's, uh, also seen better days. Is uh, some kind of gift for Sean. I hand it over to him. Here you go, kid. Merry whatnot. 
And so nonchalantly and unceremoniously, everybody is clued into that gift giving starts now by Max just walking up, slapping the hat on and shoving the brown paper bag in Sean's hands. It's not Christmas until Max puts the hat on. So uh, let's get this show on the road, huh? What do, how do we want to do this? We, uh, we exchange in first or... Uh... Well, Sean, it was your game. You explain it. Oh, yeah. So everyone gets the thing for everyone else. We did that. And then, uh, yeah, then, then you, you give the thing and, uh... So you open it now or what? No, now we, we, now we open it and, uh, Sean just, like, while looking at the bag that, uh, Max has given him, just kind of nonchalantly, like, pushes his gift at <laughs> Vera. How, how big is it? Like DV, like DVD case size? Uh, it's, it's about book sized, one might say. And, and you know, it yeah, seems yeah. a bit rigid for a book but uh okay <laughs> and as vera gets hers what does vera do with her gift who does hers go to oh right i go over to a table and set this this gift down um i imagine that her gift is very tiny and pristinely wrapped uh and she goes over to duke who imagines brooding in a corner not far off the mark yeah <laughs> Yeah, okay. S- sitting at the desk. Sitting at a desk. I come over and I, like, slide the package across. And, um, I say, this one was very hard to find, but I think I'm going to win the game. You don't win. No, everyone wins. From from the center of the room, he's just shouting, what? what? There's no winning? <laughs> and Duke? Duke uh, moves over to Max and places a, a, a box, probably no more than, like, a foot by, like, a foot large, like, 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, it is very, very like keenly and precisely wrapped. There's not much left for um, accident. It's all like keen ribbon wrapped, and things are very nicely done. Huh, yeah, you shouldn't have. Going off by character patience, I imagine Sean was the very first one. He's already to... ripped it open. Yeah, I, I figured as much. So as he's tearing <laughs> open the gift, Max, what is it that he got in a brown paper bag? Uh, well, Sean finds uh, a rather bedraggled comic book. It's very old. Uh, but beyond that, its edges are burned, there's rips in it, there's what looks like dried blood all over it through various pages. Uh, Max leans in and says, yeah, if that was in good shape, that would actually be worth quite a bit. I, uh, I figured it was apropos, you know? Uh, what you're holding is Detective Comics number 38, which is the first appearance of Batman's sidekick, Robin. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> what does Sean do as this becomes clear? Because I imagine Sean didn't recognize the comic immediately, but as Max explains what it is, I uh, I, I know I know Batman and Robin. Uh, so what what is it worth? Oh, uh, right in the condition it's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, you probably be handy if you wanted to wipe your butt. But uh, you know. You know me, I don't keep my comics in good shape. Uh, it's the reading. The reading is the real thrill, you know? Okay. I think most I think most of the pages are still there. Great. I get... I, I think I like it. Uh, so, I don't... Do we need a manipulation subterfugal here? Yo, if, <laughs> if Sean wants you to think that he likes it, I can do that. <laughs> Let's see. I don't, it's up to you if Sean really wants Max to believe. Yes, he does. All right. This is year two. I imagine he's still... Ra- yeah, he is... Uh, Max, as he's telling you how excited he is, it's absolutely clear he is sarcastic, but he's trying not to be, though it's just impossible for his nature to co- not come through. So what do we do with the other 31? Huh? Uh, do I need to have read those to understand? No, no. You know Batman. You know Batman, right? I know of him. It's th- they still they made uh, movies about him uh, up until recently. Yeah, but surely this is like thirty two. That George Clooney, he put the nail in the coffin of that franchise. Though we're not going to see another one, I don't think. It's all you know superhero stuff. It's cool though. Yeah, I I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, oh wait, although there was that new one, I, I think it did okay. I, I didn't have time to see that. <laughs> Who would be the next one to tear open their gift? Let's go with Duke. Okay. All right. Since nobody else is jumping to, I, I suppose Duke would. He would uh, He would unfold what this is. She said it was 
Hard to come by. She's gonna win the game. It's like a small box. Yeah. So as you as you slowly and I as we watch Duke, I imagine it's like each piece of tape is meticulously Definitely. torn as to not actually wrap the un, hurt the paper, mm -hmm. turned over and unfolded yes, by design, corner by corner, inch by inch. And as you lift out this small box, it's just a plain looking cardboard box, and flip it open. What is on the inside? Inside is a small white hand carved elephant. And Virago smiles very big, and she says, "It's made of human bone, particular human's bone, and it's a white elephant." I win. You certainly piqued my interest, Vera. I thought I might. Whom does this bone belong to? That is the best part. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And she cackles wildly as she like waits for the joke to build. And as she releases a Vera punchline, there's that awkward kind of like silence. And then Sean maybe like laughs. <laughs> yeah. And th the game you have won. Very good, Vera. I will cherish this pachyderm. Thank you. Max, guys, imagine after that, there is that strange tense exchange between the two of them before. Max is like, all right, I'm tearing open mine. Okay, let's see what you got here, Duke. All right. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't want to wreck your rig. You know what? I'm just ripping this open. I'm gonna... <laughs> he just rips the paper off. That was a, that was a marvelous wrapping job you did. Let's see. Okay, what do we got here? When you unfold it and open it up, it is actually a snow globe that has been handmade. The inside shows a very linear and thin brick building that says the Succu uh, Succubus Club. And on the outside, it's the uh, the classic cartoon, Wally the Gator. And he's posing as if like in welcoming pose. And it just says, welcome home. <laughs> Where, where'd you get this? <laughs> I made it. Wow. Jeez. Huh. I wouldn't have thought... Uh, I... I actually really like this. This is good. <laughs> Holy gator. Vera told me that you had a, a pet alligator at one point, and I thought it was very fitting. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> and as Max immediately physically and emotionally deflates in front of you, having saved the best for last is Vera. Perhaps done on purpose by the Coterie, perhaps done on purpose by Vera, but now all eyes are on her, with no other distractions to be had. Sean's gift... <laughs> held gingerly between her fingertips with those gorgeous black nails dragging down the side. I Yeah, I lay it on a table and you hear her nail like, you know, like clean, clean cut. Vera, I don't think I understood the game. Maybe we should uh, give it another go. I do. An, I do an X across. It is an X box, right? Uh, and I like cr and I peel the paper back. <laughs> what is it? Inside, you see a brand new copy, maybe, of uh. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. <laughs> uh, Sean? It's new. It's the new one. What is it? It's the new duty? Uh, yeah. What, what does one do with a Black Ops? So, it's a story about, like, being, uh, super cool, uh, uh... But there are no pages. Is, this is not a book. What is it? All the all the pages are on the the shiny thing inside, and you put that in the Xbox, which I'm afraid you're going to have to buy yourself. Uh, and uh, then you then you play it, and then and you enjoy it. You like shoot people. Wonderful, Sean. Wouldn't it be more fun to shoot just shoot people uh, with Max? It's a lot less illegal. And I don't use guns, Sean. It's only illegal. If, if you're caught. Good point. You can use knives in the game. Oh. And as this bizarre discussion, one, one might call it about how one would enjoy killing people in Black Ops, whether with a gun or a knife, that discussion is immediately cut silent. There's no time to discuss how she'll get an Xbox because the ry rhythmic bumping that has been happening above you this entire time stops and instead is replaced by the sounds of a crowd screaming and two loud gunshots directly above you. 
Not long after, before Vera can even say anything, you can hear the footsteps of everybody trampling and running for the exit, an entire herd of animals headed one way. And they move quickly, which is within 10, maybe 15 seconds, before all those footsteps are gone, and instead, you're left with an eerie silence. Max? Yeah, I'm on it, Vera. Thank you. Max immediately obfuscates, and you hear this... Actually, you wouldn't hear the sound of footsteps because he's completely silent. But that's where he's going, upstairs, to see what's going on. We watch as Max steps away from the coterie, and as he steps from the doorway into the hallway, he ripples out of existence from all who could see. And he quickly makes his way up the stairs. The door swings open, leading back into that nice back area where the food was being taken care of and drink was being tended to, but now completely empty. No employees milling about and no one trying to sneak in the back, uh, back door to get some privacy, as some do in this club. You quickly push your way further, out past that into the dance floor where the mezzanine hangs over you from above. But it doesn't take long, Max, before you see what caused a commotion. A simple man in a ripped t-shirt, profusely bleeding from his gut, clasping it with his left hand as he holds himself ever so steadily, looks around with a pistol dangling in his right arm. He's clearly struggling to breathe, indicating to you that he's at least mortal. And as a last couple looks around and he eyes... And only barely able to hang on to what consciousness he has, he simply screams, Vera! <sighs> and he collapses onto the ground. The gun clatters from his hand and slides across the smooth dance floor, and that blood he was holding onto in his stomach begins to slowly seep onto the ground, soaking his white t-shirt, and now soaking the freshly cleaned and waxed dance floor you had going for a rather well-decorated holiday eve. Now... Nothing more than an open tomb for a freshly dead mortal. Security uh, is uh, around. They're, uh, they're hustling out the customers, I assume. The security at this point is minimal. There's a couple people at the front hustling out customers, but it's not like it is a few years from now. The security here is still needs some work to be done. And Max, that's something you'll be taking care of rather well over the next couple of years. Okay, okay. So the gun is nowhere near him right now, yeah? slid about a foot and a half to two feet away from his uh, right hand that's now splayed out, and he is either dead or dying in front of him. Okay, I'm going to pocket the gun. Max quickly scoops up the gun as it disappears from view. Okay, no other assailants uh, visible? Looking around, everything seems empty, but you may make me a wits awareness check, please. While he disappears upstairs, do the three of you downstairs have any discussion, or... Do I hear somebody yell my name? You would have heard a muffled... You may, um, wit's insight to know if you, if you picked up the, uh, actual word or for you it was just, you heard screaming. Okay. However, the screaming stopped very abruptly after and knowing Max, that usually means the problem's taken care of. Oh. So as we see Max kind of bend down and pick up the gun, uh, or rather the gun kind of disappear from existence, Max quickly scans his ears honed in any irregularities, a creaking floorboard where the place should be empty or a misplaced knocking of a glass, but no sight of anybody and no sound of anything catches your ears or eyes, Max, as you are left with the body still laying in front of you as the pool of blood grows ever bigger. I'm going to check on this guy, see if he's still breathing. Intelligence medicine check, please. Uh, Vera, did you get your role for Wits Insight to see if you heard your name or if you just heard a... Uh, if I just heard somebody yell. A muffled shout. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a straight intelligence check because I don't know nothing about medicine. <laughs> you don't need to. You could always... Uh, wow. Two successes. Well, oh, that was uh, that was uh, Vera. Two successes? Yeah. You would have... It would have sounded kind of like your name. I know what my name sounds like out of dying men's lips. <laughs> exactly. It's not a sound you're unfamiliar <laughs> with after so many years in this business. However, Maxwell, he seems dead. Yeah, he's dead. I'm going to boot it back downstairs, just let everybody know what's going on. Okay, you're going to leave the body on the floor? No one else is around it, right? Yeah, you, it doesn't, nobody's around it. The front doors have been shut. The people are gone. You just don't know if anybody called the cops. Okay, all right. I'm heading downstairs. As far as I know, this guy's dead. He ain't going anywhere. So the door flies open after a quick make your, uh, make your way quickly to the back of the club, and the three of you downstairs hear the uh, heavy steps of a familiar Nosferatu uh, hurrying down until before he makes his way into a room that at this point in your history is not yet named. It's true. Okay, Vera, we got a problem. Uh, looks like some joker 
came into the club. He'd been shot by somebody. I don't know if it was him that was shooting off a gun, but he had this on him. I hand the gun over to him. Yep, it's just a simple pistol. Nothing special. Doesn't look like it has any insignias on it or anything at a quick glance, though you can investigate it and take it apart should you choose to. And uh, but the perpetrator is currently upstairs taking a dirt nap, if you know what I mean. Interesting. Do we know the uh, dirt napper? Nah, it didn't look familiar. I assume he did not look familiar. He did not look remo- remotely familiar. I don't know. He's just some guy. Or he used to be a guy. Now he's a hunk of meat. During this kind of confrontation, Sean... You have been with this coterie barely two years at this point. Your past couple of years have been wrought with confusion and difficulty. One, as a thin blood already is. Life as a thin blood amongst these people you've learned is one of second-class citizenship, even if only subtly. But it's never gotten too bad. Sure, you've had to do some illegal dealings, maybe rough somebody up. You've watched Max break more bones than you can count, and you've watched Duke quietly threaten as more people than that. But you've never seen true bloodshed like this, at this violent pace, this quickly. How does Sean react to hearing gunshots and now learning that there's a dead man sitting upstairs, and the three of them so nonchalantly working and talking about what to do about the body? You still do slightly feel mortal blood run through your veins. Uh, Sean's going to basically make himself smaller in any way he can. He moves a bit further back. So as, as Maxwell comes in then and Vera approaches Max and even Duke, or they probably speak near the desk with Duke as most conversations with the Coterie do, the camera watches from the wall as the three kind of congregate and it shows an intimacy that Sean is not involved in. There's a familiarity between the three, three of them. They immediately click into business mode. What are we going to do with the body? How are we going to handle this? Who could it be? There's a calmness. But behind that, as the camera loses focus of those three and finds Sean's face instead, he's meekly, quietly stepping to the back, not necessarily to a full corner, but before there was three or four feet, now Sean makes sure there's ten feet. And he watches with his hands brought up close, almost fidgeting, and hoping that, I imagine, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, that maybe they just won't notice you right now. This is a little scary. Mm. I Yeah, he... he... I think is mostly either looking at his fidgeting hands or he's looking at Vera because Vera gives the orders. Yep. And Vera right now is, as I said, kind of just just beginning to talk with Max and whatnot. But I did want to make sure we see what Sean is up to. I think think Duke might actually lean into this. This is where it looks like there is discussion happening there. And this is so very much their territory. They've been here for probably much longer than even Duke. Duke knows the kindred world fairly well, yes. and he sees Sean retracting, pulling away. Yeah, to give an idea to those who may not know, the other three have decades of kindred life under them already at this point. Sean is two years in and was assigned to this coterie. I think Duke would probably make his way. So Duke stands up from the desk as Vera is talking to Max about what to do with the body, and we see him make his way over there. However, the camera will linger with Vera and Max first. Okay, boss, what's the plan here? What you call? We leave this body for the cops to show up. You want me to make it disappear? What? Uh, On Christmas. Well, um, uh, I can't, I do. Uh, Vera takes the gun apart. Let's answer a few questions first. You may intelligence investigation as you slowly pull this thing apart. Pass this off to somebody else. (laughs) Or it could be intelligence firearms. I was going to say, I still, (laughs) if it was a knife, we'd be in a different story, but... Worth a shot. Maybe I even fit. I, I have. I got one. <laughs> Vera got one. Yeah. It, you're able to take the gun apart. It's, you've okay. seen guns over your decades of life, but there's nothing, nothing that's... Sp- no special ammo, nothing like that. Okay. Doesn't look like it at all. Looks No, the, the bullets themselves, you're familiar with bullets that can do things worse to you than to mortals, and they look like regular ammunition to you. Was this the gun he was shot with? Yes. Yeah, well, I don't know. This is He had it in his hand. I saw him drop uh, it. Okay. So uh, I just got, I think, did I just get three successes or four? You got three successes on, uh, what What did you roll specifically? Intelligence firearms. The serial number has been completely, completely rubbed off of this. Not only, but the, the thing with, with Max is you've seen a bunch of illegal firearms with serial numbers rubbed off. They're usually dirt, like hit quick jobs. You see where it's been removed. This gun looks like there was never a serial number put on this thing. It's completely smooth where it should be, and there is no markings that could trace it immediately. 
the very first thing that Max thinks of is professional hitman at the very least would have something like this, but maybe something worse. I'll uh, relay that to Vera. It's like, uh, here's the weird thing. This thing never had a serial number, as far as I can see. I don't think it's been filed off or nothing. That's not a good idea. That's not a not good news. This guy could have been a pro. That's definitely not good. You think maybe a hunter? Uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, the pertinent information, maybe I buried the lead, uh... He called out your name right before he fell down, you know? Oh, don't I? You do know, uh, as, you are, as you're discussing what to do the, uh, with, the, with the gun and whatnot, and thinking about the body upstairs, you do know while somebody could have called the cops, Christmas is rather that, busy yep. for the police, especially in the world of darkness. So you have a little time before you have to worry about sirens showing up. Uh, what do you want me to do with uh, our friend upstairs? Well, what we do with all of our friends who lay face down on the floor. Okay, so uh, he's going to disappear. We're going to need to get the janitorial up there to get rid of the blood, too. Yes, and we should keep the weapon. Sure thing. Okay, I'm heading upstairs. We see Max peel away. As he peels away and the camera refocuses on the two that are further back in the room, time rewinds a couple of minutes. Max makes his way back in, but the camera now is focused on the two in the back, and the audio from them is what greets our ears. Duke, you slowly approach Sean as the conversation between Vera and Max begins. Sean, obviously you see Duke approach. He's not being coy about him. The room is not big enough for you to hide. But does Sean, as he sees him approach, does his posture change? Does the way he's carrying himself change? What do we see? I think it almost does take Sean uh, by surprise. He's not like surprised in the normal sense he's just like been intently focusing on the conversation between vera and max and then just like duke there just way closer than sean wants him he's just like and then he like takes a half step back surprising because no matter how many times he does it you never hear him approach you were looking to the corner for a moment and he was sitting at the desk and when you looked up he had already stood from the desk and made, he was maybe two steps away from it. You didn't hear any movement, and, but when you catch his eyes, suddenly you can hear his soft footsteps while he takes them. Now you're aware that he's there. It's unnerving. How does Duke respond when he sees Sean physically seem surprised at your approach? Sean, no matter how many times you take a step back, you can't defeat the brick wall. It will still remain. You should stiffen your back and release those signs of weakness. You're in a room filled with predators. What's got you worried, Sean? Not worried. I'm fine. You're also a very bad liar. Do the gunshots have you rattled? I've had gunshots for a very long time. Duke, I just don't think I've ever seen a dead body. Well... Not one riddle with wells. Uh, what, what do you need? I think you should probably age yourself up a bit then, and we should see to this first-hand experience. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. I've learned the steps. I watched all of Joseph Wambaugh's films. Okay. Then let's go. After you. Sean very reluctantly steps ahead of Duke. There's that caution walking by him. There's almost like stepping by a predator that you can't see, knowing he's right next to you. But of course, Duke doesn't do anything. He would never do anything to one of his own coterie or those he considers close. And as Max is stepping out, so too does Sean very shortly thereafter. Does Duke follow as well in Vera? or do, uh, do they, So all four make their way up top, or does Vera stay downstairs? I think I'm going to stay downstairs. I'm going to let them go do the thing they sure. do. So Sean, sandwiched between Maxwell and Duke, march their way up the stairs, back up uh, through the steel door, the back rooms, and into the dance floor. We're there in the same position he was before, except now a large pool of blood completely surrounding his midsection is a rather plain-looking man. Now that you have some time, somewhere in his mid-thirties, shaved head, and a uh, goatee. Eyes open, staring blankly at a corner of a room. Max, before you move the body, this is Sean's first experience with what is now a cadaver. Ah, uh, 
Baby's first Christmas. We're going to shake the dregs of that uh, mortal fear. Sure, do what you want to do. So, Sean, this was a person, just like you and I were once regular people. And while he may lie here bleeding on the floor, he is nothing more than a possession of, if assumed claimed, the state at this point. He's matter, Sean, that's it. There's nothing more. His soul, if you will, has flit away. And he can't harm you. He used to be a lot more than that, though. I'm sure he was, just like you or I once were. <sighs> okay, what do I do? Depends on the situation. Did you make the body? Or did you find the body? Found it. You determine the, the death. What caused this? First glance, what do you think? Gunshot? Best guess. Honest guess. We heard the shots ring out. There were two, were there not, Max? Two shots, that's what I heard. Then we look for two points of impact. So what do we watch Sean do? Cautiously approach the body on the ground? Sean kneels down next to the body and starts to, like, look where the sources of blood are. And, and like, he moves the guy over and, like, I think what happens is that his hands end up covered in this guy's blood and you can hear him choke. And he, he just, he just steps back. Like, he rolls the guy over and there's a big splat and then he, he like, steps up. Close your eyes. I'm not, I'm not doing Hold this, Duke. Breath. You can't make me. I, it, anything else, just, I. Then at least watch. <sighs> okay. Let's get this cleaned up. Max uh, takes the Santa hat off his head and starts scooping, his, swabbing up the blood and then wringing it out into his own mouth. <laughs> Waste not, want not, right? <sighs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Duke quietly and coldly approaches the body. Max, that's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get fancy on me. There is a clear source as Duke looks at the body, by the way. The gut, as you noted, uh, as Max may have noted before while he stood. Now, though, however, he's not clutching at himself. But a quick look at the shirt shows no bullet holes in the shirt. I will lift the shirt. As you lift the shirt and pull it up and maybe even rip it open just to get a clear look at the chest and stomach, it becomes clear something else killed this man. Bullet holes are nowhere in his body. As Duke maybe looks up and thinks about the arc at which perhaps the bullets would have been fired from and looking to see if he can see any immediate impacts, but he'd need to pay more attention. This is a two-story building, after all. But looking back down catches your curiosity, particularly, Duke, with your history and expertise. Sticking out just above the navel, a small hole in the gut has an index finger pointing out of it. A hole that looks like it was ripped forcefully open, not clean cut. Somebody took a nail or a sharp object and forced uh, a wound and a finger removed from somebody as you examine to make sure it is not his own is jammed in there. And a, a small pull shows that it's stuck, a little stuck. Maybe it's wider at the base than it is that, than you see uh, the finger that's kind of just rigor mortis and stiff. And there the blood seeps from. He clearly bled to death over the course of perhaps hours. Is there any fluid? Is there any fluid around whatsoever? Something that I might be able to irrigate the uh, the wound with? You could go to the bar right over there, vodka, anything uh, along those. You could easily grab and just pour around it and clear off the blood around the wound. Max, you may be eating for and from more than just one. What you mean? Whoa. It what the hell is that? It appears to be an index finger. Huh. You don't see that every day. No. Does Duke pluck it from the stomach, or does he leave it there for now? This is most precarious. Um, is there any other identification on this individual whatsoever? A wallet? So you you go through everything. Yep, there is a wallet that you actually you know pull out from the back pocket. There is also something else that you find on the other back pocket. A laminated card. As you reach in and pull it out, you go through the wallet. There's an ID and a picture of a younger girl, maybe his daughter, it looks like. It's hard to tell. There's no writing on it, but it definitely looks like a 
like one of those school photos of a sort of a high school. But beyond that, you have his address uh, on his ID. Um, nothing else there. The laminated card, however, is a prayer card. A prayer to St. Leopold. Sean get Vera immediately. He just leaves. Okay. Sean wordlessly heads downstairs. Do you say anything to Maxwell? I say Leopold. Leopold. Leopold? Leopold. 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 <laughs> Max clearly does means nothing to him. And that's not surprising. It may not even necessarily mean anything to many people. Max. Unless those who've had run-ins with them before. It's hunters. What? It's hunters. It's a prayer of St. Leopold. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, this guy was a hunter? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that he may have been at one point, but he's done something very wrong. And now he has been the target of Leopold, in which case they likely followed him to this location. Right. What about the uh, the old tummy finger there? What's up with that? I have no immediate interest in retrieving or removing that. Yeah, I can pull it out of... Vera does. <laughs> As this like an am, yeah, I don't know, whatever. There's a hard cut. We find ourselves immediately back downstairs, and we see the foot of Sean taking that last step from the stairs to the smooth concrete floor. Vera, you've heard some movement upstairs, even some minor chatter, obviously indeterminate from where you are, but you actually hear the light footsteps of Sean. He's the only one that moves that mouse-like. He turns a right, and in there he stands in the doorway. He looks, well, he's already pale, but if he was mortal, you would say he looks pale. Sean, have you fed? Uh, no, no, there's... A body upstairs, it would be easy. You look rather pasty. Um, uh, it's... Do you want to do about it? About... Uh, go. Uh, and I kind of, like, push him along to come with again. And back up the stairs, Sean is ushered. Was there a hope in Sean that he'd be allowed to stay downstairs? Yes. I imagine there was a minor glimmer of hope in the back of his mind that he's like, all right, my job's done. I can rest. But no, not so lucky. Uh, Vera, actually, on our way up, Vera goes, you know, Sean, we haven't celebrated Christmas in many decades. Not properly, anyways. Gift giving and all of that. Is this pro- this proper? Well, I guess that begs to question whether you're not a delivery of a dead body is considered a gift. You've got a secret Santa, then. Oh, I have many secrets. Come. Ushered up the stairs, the door swings open. Max and Duke, you see Vera, uh, accompanied by Sean. Vera, however, as you see the face of this man, I'd like a memory roll, please. No, I get two. You recognize that face. Not because you're familiar with it or you see it often. The last time you saw it, I think he was ten? Maybe 11? He's the son of somebody you know. Somebody you keep up with regularly. At least you think it is. You're not entirely sure, but he looks familiar. And you've watched many a child turn to adult in your years. A recognition like that isn't so hard. But there's no way to be certain, not yet. Well, I will keep that piece to myself, um, for now. Um... Is there something wrong with it? You see the index finger jutting out of the gut as you ask that very question. Oh, Sean. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I have a feeling. You were right. There is a gift. And I'll reach in with, like, my long talons and, like, slide the finger out. And there is resistance initially. You weren't expecting it, but there is, like, the skin of the stomach actually mm -hmm. pulls with the index a finger as you tug at it. Extra gift. And a nice hard tug, and there's, a, there's an audible kind of like moist pop as it comes free, and li uh, liquids kind of burble forth and pour over to the sides. But you see what was holding it in place now. A rather gaudy gold ring with an insignia at the very front that was resisting coming off of the finger at the base. You actually see a familiar marking, Vera. One of a dance school who's run by a headmistress you're not particularly... Uh, or rather, you are rather particularly uh, interested in keeping up with over the years. She ties you to a part of your mortality you wish you wouldn't forget. Vera runs a finger through some blood and uh, 
rubs it on her lips to touch off her lipstick. There's a notable. Yeah. And there's a notable change, Sean, Max, and Duke, as she pulls the finger, sees whatever it is she sees, the way she carries herself, goes from aloof to uh, almost kind of um, silly and playful to deadly serious. The ring. Is it a signet ring? It's a signet of the school. Yeah, it's like, a, I guess you call it like a class ring or a school ring Sean. to mark her where she works. Come here. I need your pasty white skin. I'm bringing the prayer card over as well. Oh, okay. Um, I take the signet ring covered in blood, right, from the body, uh, and I press it into Sean's forehead to make the stamp. His, you said his skin was pasty white. As you pull it away, there is a uh, an incredibly elegant two swans intertwined with one another. I'm gonna like why and rub it, and then it gets blood all over my forehead. Stop. Ah. We're looking at something. You may both make me a uh, <laughs> dexterity athletics check to see who rubs and who pops first. Good luck, sir. So I have a feeling Vera has a uh, a bit of an edge on dear old Sean when it Maybe. comes to dex. It How really about? depends. Oh, a five? Wow, Sean! I rolled the same thing. If we're equal, then she probably beats me. She's faster. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give it to, if you you tied Vera uh, just by a split hair of a second as you're about to touch it, whap, just out of nowhere. And there's a, a, like a, a, a scratch that would have drawn blood if you were um, more mortal than you are now. We're looking at something. Hold still. And I'll kind of grab his chin a little bit. And I, I gesture for Duke and Max to come <laughs> over. <laughs> This <laughs> they each walk over one on each shoulder. Yeah, I'm looking over shoulder. The devil on the devil on your shoulder. This signet ring of a school down the road. Max, you may be somewhat familiar with them. An art school magnet of the sort, but uh, this well, dead human. It's the son. Who? Of the headmistress. M- Mr. Tummyfinger here. Yes, the wrapping, as one might call it. And I go, thank you, Sean. And I kind of pat the side of his cheek as I let his face go. Yeah, and you can feel it's got that tickling itch as it slowly drips past the brow onto the tip, a bridge of your nose, before, as that's when she lets you go. Does he wipe it? Do we see Sean immediately? Yep. Okay, as soon as you're let go, off it goes. This, on the other hand. Go on. I don't know anything about this card. I just don't know anything about this card. Why? What I'm guessing is a hunter? You were never taught. Maybe it's something of the venture teachings, but we tend to learn who hate us most. Her past would not have had her cross paths with, unless she messed up incredibly badly. She would have not been crossing paths with hunters too often. So it's no surprise that Vera might not know who this particular right. sect of hunters yeah, are. Yeah, Vera says to Duke, you, you forget, I was the hunter. Rarely was I hunted. Well, if you were not previously angry at your sire, you should. Caesar taught me many things, particularly about the faith bound and how exactly dangerous they can be to kindred. Okay, Vera, what's the call on this joker here? Should I uh, drain him and chop him up as per usual? He probably holds sentimental value to his mother. Hey. For now, take him downstairs. Don't chop him up or any of the sort until I decide if she wants it back. Okay, but, uh... It may be Christmas Eve, but I... Just want to be clear, the blood that's already out of his body is fair game, right? All yours, Max. Okay, all right. Come come on, tummy finger, let's go. Ugh. <laughs> and all, like limply the body just hoists up and over your shoulder as Max marches his way out of the main dance floor and back down the stairs to store this thing in a refrigerator of a sort. There is there a reason why this boy said your name? Uh You said his mother. I keep tabs on her. She is problematic on the occasion. In regards to concern for us? I genuinely do not know. You said they found the card on him, which means he himself was possibly a hunter? This prayer 
when I came upstairs and or when when he was describing where the gun was, was it deliberately from the uh, the right or left side of the body? The gun was being held in his right hand, so it slipped out of his right hand or to the right of his body when he collapsed. And did he have all of his fingers? Yes. Vera, I believe it may be safe to assume that this woman that you may be keeping tabs on may have recently become deceased. Well, for as many times as I have sent fingers through the mail, it's usually not because they're dead yet. Seems like a threat. Well. Okay. This was a problem for you, this woman. An issue. Yes. And now even more so. Was this a, a human issue or a kindred issue? She has always been human. She is a kind, if that's what you're asking. Well, we've been discovered by the church, or perchance just a hunter with a bit of a play. They know that we're here. He was delivered here. The boy had all of his fingers. The ring was meant as a message, and so was the message in his back pocket. We now have a hunter to deal with, and hopefully just one. Well, maybe it's time to figure out who the hunter wants. I'd like to go for a stroll. Would you like Max? No, no. Max is busy. And he's got uh, such a feast uh, before the evening is over. And I gesture to the puddling blood on the floor that I know he'll come back for. <laughs> So, I'm going to go for a stroll, maybe down to the schoolyard, see if I can draw more conclusions. Do you desire any company? I love company. Sean, would you like to come as well? Y yeah, sure. And Duke, are you going as well? Yes, I think I will. I go, Sean. Yeah... That is no way to celebrate on Christmas. You sound so down. I I could go read my comic if you really want. I, I'm okay being anywhere but here. Sean, let's, what I'm trying to say is what do you want? This whole business to be over. I don't want... I don't want in. Good. Then go help Max clean up this mess. Ah, oh, come on, please. I'd really Sean, rather. you drink it. Yeah, I don't have to look at it all the time, though. It's normally in people. Sean, you have, you have one of two options. Either you remove yourself downstairs to assist in the body part removal of this individual, or we'll find you a placebo and you can run with us. Adults. Kindred. Doing adult kindred things. The hell's a placebo? For you, it would be a gun, because apparently you're lacking confidence. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Vera, do you still have the pistol? Um, no. I gave that to Max, in fact. Max reappears with a bucket and a mop. <laughs> he hands the gun, it's like, well, you need this? He hands the gun over uh, to Vera. Oh. Hand it to Duke. And then to Sean. <laughs> Max begins mopping up the blood and then wringing it into the uh, bucket and just sort of humming into himself. I'm so glad we had this time <laughs> together. Da, da, da. Don't worry, Sean. This should be just like in your Xbox game. You see the bad individual, the one that wants to take your head, and you fire at them repeatedly until they stop standing. Is that what the game is about? This is what I've read on the, the rear side, yes. Oh, I may... Oh... Oh, there is pages to read. I I think I get it. I get it. Just I I put it in my trouser belt uh, and then just like head towards the door. Seems dangerous for your genitalia, but what do I know? As you're heading towards the door, you see Max lift up the bucket and just sort of take a long drink from it. And then when he notices you all looking at him, he's like, "What are you fancy?" <laughs> And I just go, Max, we're running down to the schoolyard. Uh, we'll be back. Since there may be a hunter on the loose, I thought some general scoping of the block might be a good idea. 
Okay, I'll clean up here and I'll hold the fort. You got it, Vera. Did Sean decide to come? Yep, he is... Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Smoking a blunt to calm his <laughs> nerves. <laughs> As you make your way out the back door into the alleyways of New York, distancing yourself slightly from where the gunshots were heard, though after you get about a block away, it seems business as usual is picked up amongst the streets. We see Sean kind of plop a blunt into his mouth and just cover until gets the light and just a big inhale as he tries to calm his nerves. As you're merely walking about three or four blocks away. The dance school takes up about a quarter of the block, and while there's a schoolyard of a sort, it's not like you would in an elementary or a high school even. There's only an area to park. But it's a boarding school. This is where this is where a lot of the those looking to um, dedicate themselves to this particular art go. And for whether you like her or not, for whether she's Vera's taste or not, the headmistress is known to get results, and the people that she churns out of her school are always top-notch. And as you walk by, strolling, just gazing at your first look at the uh, at the school, as there's enough people in the crowd still wandering around to get through without being too uh, suspicious, it looks like most lights are out, with the spare one or two scattered around the uh, three-story building. Doesn't look like anything on the outside is all that suspicious and immediately. Mm. Now, is there, how would you like to case this place in a, are you looking to just walk by it a couple of times? I, I feel like if I've stalked her for a bit or I've been by, I would know if she drives a vehicle, if her car would be here, her office would be here. You know where her office is. Yep. So we'll say you do about three loops where you kind of look at very specific things. You do notice that her car is still here, which is bizarre because she does not live here. And her office light is on on the third floor, though you do not see anybody moving or any silhouettes or anything on the walks that you have. Those would be the things that stick out just from a very simple walk by. I'm going to go up the back way. I'll let you both in the front in case anything is odd. Hmm? Ugh, I should have worn pants. And Vera takes her nail and like slices the vinyl dress open in the front and the back so that it, it hangs a little bit more loosely. Uh, she takes her shoes off and she, yeah. Immediately you just, yeah. You can... Pass it to Sean. Uh, hold those. Yeah, this... um, and Vera gets a running start and she's going to climb this building up to the third okay. floor. Uh, I don't know if there's like a fire escape or if I can just, um, if there's a way I can jump from like window to window. There's a fire escape, but it's. If there's a fire escape, you'd be able to climb and uh, kind of jump to, but the first leap to it is going to be rather large, though you are a Toreador and a skilled, dexterous one at that. I have Cat's Grace. So a dex athletics check to make a jump. We see Vera kind of gingerly kick off her high heels and with an index and middle finger dangling, the two of them drop them into Sean's lap, slits her dress open. You can hear that clean. Oh, rip. that was a horrible roll. I had like seven die on that. You can will power and reroll three. Ah, that's what I needed. That makes you four. Add three successes to it, <laughs> making a total of four. And you, ha you hear that clean rip as she uses her nails, as she described down her vinyl dress. And as she looks up, she kind of just almost looks a little frustrated. It's been a while since she's needed to do anything this drastic for a mortal. And so she takes off and she moves at a speed that is you've never seen a mortal move at. You've really never seen Vera move at Sean. You've seen her move uncannily quick when she needs to hit you or get in your way. But to do this... Seeing her in full action, if this is what it is, this is a rare treat for anyone, kindred or kind alike. And after three or four large strides in a speed that is hard to keep track of, you see Vera kind of crouch and kick off. And with a, like a, a simple soaring leap with one hand reaching out, she grabs the second rung on the ladder and continuing at that momentum, just a couple quick one, two, three, before she's at the top, her feet are at the bottom, and she's safely on the fire escape. And she begins to quickly crawl her way to the third floor. Leading, by the way, the, uh, the fire escape will lead to a hallway on the third floor, not directly to her office. Sean, um, Duke, and, and uh, Duke, you've seen uh, her do this many a time in the past. Um, but Sean, do we see a, a little bit of stunned uh, kind of come off of Sean's face? I think so. Yeah, he's uh, not expected the very upright, you know, rod up her ass Vera to move anywhere near as elegantly as that. Oh, or at least that quickly, yeah. You should remember this very unique experience is one day you may have to defend yourself from her. I don't think I could survive that. 
Sean, what's in sight, please? As he says that. Okay. (laughs) I mean, he says everything in such a monotone way. And with one success, you're not gonna... That just seemed out of nowhere for Duke. That didn't. That was not necessary. It just seemed out of place. Two. All right. With with two successes, you. That was beyond being out of place. Two doesn't speak unless he says something that ha- carries meaning. He never speaks when it's superfluous. Maybe he's tried a couple of times, but he hasn't really interacted with you all that much. At this point, two years into this coterie, anytime he talks, there's a re- there's like a lesson behind it. There's a reason. So I don't know how Sean would take that out of like that threat about Vera. And Sean but... just has another reason to be scared. <laughs> Fine. And Sean, we see kind of like internally swallow. Oh, hi. It's me, Vera. While you're taking a break, take a moment to visit DieHardDice.com. Die Hard Dice is a sponsor of this little podcast. They make what we do possible. During checkout, make sure to use the code STITCH-FEB and you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. And we get a little cut for our own resources. Mm. Sounds like we only roll with the best. Uh, as Sean watches Vera go up, his, his hair now slight, li- lightly covered in snow, much like Dukes is brushing it out of his way to watch her get, make her way up to the door. The door, of course, is locked, Vera. If you want to, do you have the ability to pick the lock? Um, I might. Let's Dex see. larceny? Mm. No, but I, I mean, I could still roll it. Um, it's not like I don't. You could roll it. You could try and uh, just bust open the door if you want to do a strength brawl. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Remember, you can always rouse the blood as well. Yeah, Vera will try to kind of like pick the lock with her fingernail. Um, I yeah. don't really have the lock. This is not like a but... super like master lock here that you're trying to pick. Nope. Nope. Well, we'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like to willpower and reroll the three? All right, it might be ahead. worth it just to get in the door. <laughs> there we go. I got, got the one. One success. Oh, Vera, I needed two, babe. Yeah. Oh, no. I break my nail into the door. <laughs> So deftly, like, runs up. You see her take a knee real quick, and she, like, kind of messes with her fingers and then kind of moves into the lock. And then you see her pull her finger out, and you see her swear and, like, whip her finger around. And then she looks back at you, at the the two of you, probably motion with her finger out and her nail broken. I I imagine it's the middle one just, sorry, this charity stream. A middle one just for the sake of it. And she, I will kill whoever made this evening um, this way. Uh, is there a window I can break in through? Nothing else other than the door? There is a window. It would still, but like it's because it's that steel door that leads to an exit. It's a small window that has that wiring in the cross. So it would be mm-hmm. a strength brawl check to get to still pull it, it free. Minimum. I don't know. Well, I don't know what Duke's strength brawl is. I was about to say, I look down and I go, yeah, it's locked. You just hear me say down to them. <laughs> You need it to be unlocked. You just say it out loud. Hang on, I need to make a roll. I do. Not terribly loud, but I imagine I do yell down. I I, I can make it unlocked. Help me out. Okay. Dex athletics check, please, Sean. Can, can do give him a boost? Because <laughs> <laughs> you said he has to make the jump. This is a school, right? This is like, this is some sort of like academy. Okay. Boarding school. Yeah. Short of like the obvious path, which you said it's snowing, so I'm guessing it's been salted. Is there anything that sort of looks like someone else outside of Vera may have gone uh, around the building or through a window or something like that? I would need more than a passing wits awareness for that to be discovered. So if you're gotcha, looking to okay. put time into a wits investigation check, that's that's um, going to be yeah, time. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll circle the building while she's doing You're, her climb. While they're doing that upstairs. Yeah. So, do you give Sean a boost? Uh, yeah, sure, I will. <laughs> this is how I die. Uh, uh up. <laughs> up. <laughs> Very toddler like up. up, and so Duke. Like it's like I'm picking up Simba and holding him. <laughs> and just, like, very steadily rise him up. 
do eventually, Sean, you can grab one and you're able to pull your way up. So I'm going to get a wits, uh, a wits investigation from Mr. Duke and a uh, Dex lar- larceny check from Sean. Dang, my man. Wow. Hey, that's, eight. that's eight successes. Oh, you crit. Man, that's yep. nuts. That's, what a okay, roll. Nice. Why couldn't we have those rolls in season one from you? Right? I, I know, right? <laughs> Boy, hey. Uh, and did we get the other, uh, the Dex larceny from Sean? There goes three. Three successes. Beautiful. So we, uh, as, as, do you have, um, lock picks, Sean? Do you have like a No, I mean, he's probably got small screwdrivers and that's about it. Yeah, exactly. So I just want curious what tools we're seeing Sean pulling out of his ripped jeans in his pockets. And it's like, like you said, it's like a screwdriver that's like a flat head and tiny that you can wedge into yeah. one side. Vera might even have a bobby pin to offer, you know, yeah. As he's fiddling around, he's like, ah. Oh. Oh dang! Usually I use like one of my insert drug reference tools <laughs> here, and like he doesn't have it on him right now. So you pop, pull back end of a burnt spoon. He gets to work. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Duke very quietly begins to walk his way around, looking for any sign of somebody who have come in. Hmm. Now you wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for Duke rolling more than five successes, which is what I was looking for here. Because the footsteps that are left in the snow have been almost entirely covered up by fresh snow. There's no indication um, of any fighting on the outside. It doesn't look like whoever made their way in needed to fight their way in. There's a small path that walks along the back edges of the wall. You can see where they probably jumped over and landed. And they walked around the edges and then walked directly into the back door. Doesn't look like there was any resistance. But you only see like maybe four or five of the of the footsteps and you're able to piece it together by spending about 10 minutes just doing the math and thinking where they came over. All right, if they went from here to here because the footsteps are like 15 feet apart, what's the most likely route? But yes, it does look like somebody hopped the fence and made their way in the back door, Duke. Someone or someones as in multiple? Someone. Good. And you just you kind of come to that conclusion as you hear almost like a mm, yes from Sean as he pops the lock. Well, after you, milady, can I see them? As Duke rounds the corner and the door, yeah, you come back around the corner. You can see the door just now beginning to to creak open, and some light from the hallway begin to flood outside. Do you stop them? If I see her disappear, I I'll make some sort of a a, a notion or a sound. You see her about to like they're about to step in, and so as you're about to step into the building, you all of a sudden hear a. <clears throat> From below you. It's pretty silent out at this point. The school's yeah. closed. It's. I'll lean over the railing and kind of uh, wait to see what Duke has to say. And you see Duke looking up. Would you like to join us? Well, there's one. Oh. There's one. Vera nods. Good. When it's clear, allow me in the front. Sean, why don't you let Duke in the front? And I can send Sean to like go open that door or whatever as we come inside. Yeah, he can go down the the, the stair the stairs that are going to be right next to the fire escape that would lead down to the first floor. But we're going to cut back to the club for a moment. Max, they've been taking a while. They said they were just going to case the joint and they would be back. And you've cleaned and indulged in quite a bit of that blood. It's dry, sure. Or I mean, it's starting to kind of get that thickness to it as it's been as it's seen the air for a while. But yeah, yeah, I don't mind that. That's fine. I. You know, I I sometimes eat scabs, so it's not really a problem for me. And honestly, the floor was just wax, so it kind of added a weird tanginess to the fl- flavor of the blood. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. So uh, once I finish, you know, licking up the floor to get the last of it, uh, I uh, I think I might be wanting to go check on them, taking a look around the neighborhood. You know where the school is. Vera has sent you a couple of times over the years, just on nights where she's been too busy for herself, but insistent on somebody swinging by the school to make sure everything's good. So you know where it's at. You don't necessarily know who the woman is, but the things that she had you check, whether there was an attack happening or something kind of strange, never really uh, happened. It always seemed quiet out there. So we'll say, as Duke is um, getting their attention and saying there's one, and we hear Vera direct Sean... We, uh, you are behind Duke without him knowing, um, Max. You just arrive and hear that brief conversation, obfuscated and deadly silent, of course. Do you make yourself known, or do you just kind of wait it out? Uh, I'll, I'll do my usual of like, hey, how's it going? Just uh, a, a disembodied voice suddenly pops up. Duke shows no break in his stoicism. As the voice comes over his shoulder, his stare at the top is not broken. He takes a moment before he 
brings his head down as unsuspiciously as he can and engages with Max as he chooses. Okay, Duke, what's the rumpus? There's at least one in the building. They attempted to disguise their entry, but I was able to detect it. Okay, whose heads need cracking? Huh? <laughs> well, I'm entirely unaware, but they will likely pack all forms of heat, if you will. Yeah, it's all right. I came loaded for there. Are you prepared to deal with faith, and have you encountered anyone with faith before? Faith? What, what are you talking about? The faith hunter. They speak the word of God. It will trigger and rile your beast in a form of fear that you've likely never seen before, even more so dramatically than fire. Huh. Well, uh, I assume blowing the heads off with a shotgun before they can do anything will be efficacious in this situation, right? I would say yes, that is accurate. Okay, that's what I'm going to do then. And as he, like, comes to that conclusion, you, Sean, you've made your way down the fire escape to the front door. No resistance whatsoever. You hear nobody walking around, nobody out partying or, or chattering. It's very, very eerily quiet. Though, the way Vera speaks of the headmistress, that doesn't necessarily surprise you. You eventually make your way to the front door and take off the two locks and, oh, wait, there's a padlock here. Dex Larceny, please. Yeah, well. You are in the middle of New York. Good sir. Yeah, he's used to it. He's just annoyed. in a world of darkness, New York. <laughs> there's uh, extra security on mortal buildings pretty much everywhere. That is, that's three. What three? Uh, after just fiddling with it, eventually it kind of comes loose. It's just one of those master padlocks. You've unlocked plenty of them in your past. You did it as a hobby when you were immortal, and eventually <laughs> pops, and the chain kind of you hear that deafening sliding of a metal chain against the two bars as it comes loose and. Um, we see Sean quickly kind of scoop it up before it hits the ground and gently place it before he presses him in the front door, double door swing open. And you see Duke just standing there by himself. Come in. Welcome. Thank you. Nice work there, kid. A voice as, as it pass as Duke passes by you, Max's voice comes out of nowhere. You're welcome, Duke. That. Sure, we'll run with that. <laughs> the front doors close behind them. The camera flies back up the stairs as they gather, because Vera has been quietly moving about. First, Vera, you're no stranger to staying quiet. Your profession before the ownership of this club was predicated on your talent there. Dex stealth check, please. Three. We watch as Vera, as Sean, you know, slips away to the fire escape stairwell and, and uh, the side stairwell of the building and begins to make his way downstairs. We watch Vera change posture again. It's almost like she changes stances in a video game if Sean was watching. The way she carries herself almost always speaks of its intent. The difficulty is reading what each stance's intent is. And this time, we see the roots of her ballet step forward, not carrying herself all prim and proper or uh, with an air of royalty or even an air of sass. This is almost the way she moves, pure respect for her own body, a complete mastery over it. Every step into a shadow, avoiding a light, each step as the toes hit first, followed by the ball and the heel make no sound. In each room she peers into, quietly, without anybody realizing. The camera even being on the inside a couple of those rooms, only ever catching just a moment of a glimpse of a shadow underneath the crack of the door, but never her actual figure. And this is how she searches the third floor meticulously. Please, wits uh, investigation check. I'm looking, if it means anything or helps, I'm specifically looking for her office. Nope. Oh, I know. I, I imagine you're going to, you know, all the, the regular high hits where you expect her to be, but you're just... I could do an awareness roll, uh, but yeah, no. No, no, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, you're, you're, um, I would actually, in, in response to your failure, I need a wits awareness roll. Got it. Okay. Two. With two successes as you're going from room to room, all of the lights are off. Spare, obviously, her office, which is where you saw the light on. But as you approach the office and peer in, it's actually completely empty. And even taking a moment to really take the room in, it is completely empty. There's only one room left that you haven't. A dance studio at the third floor for practice. The ones with right. the, the ballet bars on the side. Mirrors and stuff. Yep, exactly. As you look inside, 
you see a very simple figure sitting on a chair, with a bag over her head. She's older now, 40s or 50s or so, and a very plain dress that goes past her knees down to her shins. You don't hear anything, she doesn't look like she's struggling. But before you open the door, you do catch a glimpse of what looks like something square sitting under her blouse, on top of her, like, stomach. An object Mm. placed there. And as you look in, you see no other figure, but you can't see every corner of the room with the door closed. Actually, no. Yes, you can. There are mirrors everywhere. You see (laughs) another individual standing in a corner of the room, and as you catch his eyes, he catches yours. But there's no action. He moves not once. I don't know this person. You can't tell if he's... Do does uh? Do you want to get a good close look? Is that like this is a, your wits awareness is what gave you that because you failed yeah. your wits investigation? So right, you're yeah. getting a quick glimpse of like bef- before you make a decision of a, a person who's you're kind of catching through a di- like a mirror reflection and it's hard to see details. Um, and the woman Vera will like- slide the two knives out of her garter belts on her legs. Um, and hold them and hold them. Uh, for sure. Actually, can I get a, a deck stealth check? Oh, yeah. A deck stealth check. Just to see if his eyes catch yours. I should give you that. You see him, but he might not see you. I got a one. I don't care if he sees me at this point. He he catches your eyes then. No, he can catch my eyes. That's Math is please. That's Vera's best quality. Uh, Yeah. And she may even she may even turn awe on. Why not? Right? Like if he's going to make eye contact, hell, go for it. Um, doesn't cost me anything. So she turns all on and kind of removes these two knives very slowly, even if he wants mm-hmm. to see them from the garter belts around her legs. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just hold on to those for a moment. You're looking through a window in the door. You're not, the doors aren't open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They aren't open yet. Yep. Back downstairs, as the two of them walked in, I imagine, Sean, you led them immediately all the way up the stairs to the second floor and up to the hallway. Yeah. As you guys kind of breach the hallway and look down, you actually don't see her right away. You don't see Vera at all. It isn't until you're about halfway down the hallway that we'll say Max or Duke catches the silhouette of Vera pressed very tightly up against a corner where no light is hitting and her sleek black outfit has her just impossible to see. If it wasn't for her banana curls that hang ever so (laughs) slightly forward that catch a light, that give away that she might be there, you would never know. For a second, Max ripples into existence and Sean and Duke can see that he's no longer wearing his bathrobe. It looks like he changed before he came out. He's wearing the hoodie and trench coat. You can see the flap jacket underneath. And he opens his coat to reveal the shot, the sawed-off shotgun hanging from its harness and whatnot. And he holds up his finger like this. And just points in the direction of Vera and then ripples out of existence again. Does Duke do anything in in response to that? I just look to Sean and then motion for the gun in his pants. Yeah, he... Picks out the okay. gun, gets ready. Everybody quietly <laughs> arming themselves, and we watch as, uh, does Duke, Duke doesn't have a weapon on him, does he? Duke is his own weapon. Exactly. So we see Duke just kind of quietly walk forward. However, Max is the first one to make his way. And I imagine now that he's, in, he's invisible, he's going to get a much clearer view than Vera can get, uh, kind of pressing herself up against and, and uh, stealthing. Yep. So I need Max to make me a wits awareness check. One, two, three, four successes. Beautiful. Man, y'all are rolling great tonight. Max, you actually see the important thing that Vera couldn't catch just at the angle she's at, because you can see him a little clearer from the left-hand side on that mirror. In his right hand, he was holding behind his back, so no reflection could be seen by Vera from the other side. He's clearly holding some sort of makeshift trigger. Maybe a dead man a dead man switch would be your first guess. Okay, can I sneak up behind him? You'd have to open the doors. And he would know because the doors would open. Okay. The doors are closed and he's simply standing there. He does not know you're there. The only one he thinks is there is Vera. And he's not moved quite yet. Dead man switch, you say. Shooting him is yes. probably not a good option. Not if you want this woman to not explode. Let me go in and try. Well, does uh, Max say anything uh, to Vera to let her to let her know? Uh, yeah, he'll just like very get very close to her ear and just say, I'm here, boss. What's the play? Well, he already knows I'm here. And if he's got a switch, then we could all go kaboom. Tell you what, I'll follow your lead. If you want to go in through the door, I could sneak around behind you, get close to him. 
Duke, you say you know a little about these hunter types? I I don't think Duke is close enough to probably immediately hear you. He's just waiting for any kind of like um, uh, knee jerk reaction. Yeah, if she's talking to Max, it's like I don't know. Apparently, they got faith or something. But shooting him in the face with a shotgun proves efficacious. Well, it is the holiday season. Um, Vera will not put the knives away, but she will open the door. Max will sneak in uh, around the door because, you know, obviously just trying to... Yep, go ahead and make me your, your roll. As the door creaks open, like you press the bar, uh, you turn the handle rather and, and begin to pull it open. He actually does step out from the corner. He doesn't sprint and he doesn't come at you in an aggressive way. He takes three steps and puts himself behind her. And in his left hand, as he pulls out his right hand, showing you now clearly the dead man's switch, in the pistol, in which he brings the dead man's switch closer, he pulls a pistol and puts it to the back of her head. He's like, nah, no, you do not come in here. You keep that door open, and we're going to make this quick. She means something to you. I already know that. And he is instantly to you, Vera, terrified. This does not reek of professionalism. This does not reek of somebody who's trained. But he jams the pistol violently into the back of her head. Listen. Do you have a name? It doesn't matter. It does. Listen to me. I have a demand and I'll let her live. And Vera, I mean, she's got awe on and she can try to persuade them. Calm down. We can talk about this. Can I persuade him to try to put it down? You, yeah. You absolutely are, are welcome to try. But as you are beginning to talk... I said, I just want him to put the gun down. Sure, go ahead and make me... um, You're using awe, obviously. As you kind of like talk to him, he very quickly tries to just push to his point. Again, indicating that he's nervous, at the very least. uh, That the slight tremor in his hand as he has the pistol like pressed up against her head. She has not said a word. She has not grunted, whined, or or seemed to be crying. Um, However, he's like, you run with somebody. I want... I want him... You can have her if I have him. Listen, I run with a lot of people. It's called a reputation. No, no, you run with him. He's... Duke! You run with Duke! As he spits out Duke's name, Max is going to sort of slide into position behind him. Now, <laughs> now he has no idea. Now, this dead man switch, is this... Uh, this is. He's already holding it, so if he was to let go... Okay, so would... if I were to put my hand around his and squeeze, that would actually... <laughs> You could you could break the switch if you squeeze too hard. Okay, but I don't I don't imagine you're gonna do. I'm that. not gonna squeeze too hard. Uh, the gun is currently at the back of her head or lowered. Back of her head, pressed up against her head. Okay, so Max is just sort of getting into position so that that he can grab both hands. He can like grab the dead man's switch and keep it closed, and then probably just like you know break his wrist to. Uh, so you just kind of get within like an inch off yes. of, of the limbs as he holds steady. So his uh, his dead man switches up to his chest. So you kind of have him like in a pre-embrace, mm-hmm. uh, as it were. Okay. Meanwhile, he's like, Duke, I just want Duke. You give me Duke and I give you. And he just kind of shoves the pistol in the back of her hand. Whatever this bitch's name is. Do me a favor. Avoid using that word again. Just give me what I want. What do you want with Duke. What I'm owed! Well, let's see if we can't pay up. What is it he owes you? And as he goes to speak, you watch as his eyebrows kind of contort, and he goes to talk, and he bites his lip, and there's a clear fighting with his own emotional stability. He owes me justice! Does he now? Now's a good time as ever, Max. (laughs) Vera kind of rolls her eyes. He, he, he raises his eyebrow as you say that. He hears from behind him, Come here, you little prick. <laughs> Strength brawl, please. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, it's against a one defense because you're catching him uh, off guard, so he has no idea that this is happening. You said that was strength brawl, yes? Yeah, because you're grappling, so you're going Okay, to so that'll actually be eight dice, and I'm going to yeah. use pot- my potence as well. So this will actually be ten dice. All right, give me your rouse check first, then, if you're going to rouse the blood. Uh-huh. I don't know, eight dice should be enough. Do I need to run? I mean, that is a disgusting amount of dice, no matter which way you do it. That's true. That's true. Hold on. Uh, Did my rouse check go through? Yeah, you failed. It just went through, so you gain a hunger. 
Yeah, you know, hunger. But I got I got yeah. a bunch of blood at home. <laughs> <laughs> Four, five, six, six successes. Uh, so we watch as he as, as he says, "Come here, you little prick!" Rippling into existence, the hands just over his, and a quick clench down on them. Particularly the one with the dead man switch, obviously the one with the gun. But he does, as you grab him nervously, his figure his finger does go to pull the trigger. Can I get a Dex Athletics check from Max only? That's three. That's three. Oh my god, you crit! No, that's uh five. Oh no, that's five. Yeah, you're right. He did Two crit. Pens. And so as the gun goes off, it's it's at the moment where the your grip actually misaligns his wrist and you can actually hear a slight um, like fracture as his uh, wrist bends a little bit up further than it can and the, and the bullet firing off and hitting uh, one of the mirrors as it glass uh, shatters and falls forward. That Duke and Sean, obviously you see all that happened kind of in an instant. It was calm, Vera was talking, and then there was uh, Max. But now he can't move. The The gun is, his wrist is snapped. He kind of let out can a short... I, yeah. as, can uh, I just make a hand. melee attack to just slice his throat and be yeah. done with this? I mean, if you want to just kill him, you're absolutely welcome. I mean, or, or maybe I'll just, can I, uh, I guess I need to wound him. Well, I go, do, I actually look at Max and I go, do we care what he has to say? Yeah, uh, maybe we... Might have some info. Uh, oh, by the way, friend, that's seven years bad luck. Let's hope you live that long. Now, Duke and Sean, you both heard the conversations that they were having. Um, do you do you just stand on the outside and wait, or are you sure you'd like to hear what he has to say? You can wait outside. Does Duke so? Does oh, do you say that to Sean? I want to know what you've done to people. How you say about Vera? I have to defend myself against it at some point. Very clever. You may yet live to see in five years as a kindred. We'll see. You can do something, surely. Go have a chat. I'll walk into the room. So Vera will take the two blades, put them through his hands, and then jam them into his shoulders so his hands are behind, like, his back, and that way he can't really do anything. What about the uh, dead man switch in one of his hands, however? Uh, I'm still holding it. You guys say, he, Max has still got his hands, like, crunched, so... Oh, if you're holding him in place, then I'll just jam him into, like... Peel it out of his hands, but there would be a risk of accidentally letting it slide, slip. You could also just cut his hand off. Oh, I know what Vera will do. If he's holding him in place, Vera comes over Mm -hmm. um, really, really close and she gets right next to his eyes with her nails and she says, one of my favorite things in the whole world is to pluck a man's eyes from his skull. So, you let that trigger go and we'll make sure that you continue to see. Now, don't don't get him to let it go because that's going to make it go boom. But I thought he had the trigger. I thought Max had it. He has the his hand. It's still, yeah, yeah. He's got the hand that's holding the trigger. Like he's ho- grappling this guy. It's a release. As soon as he releases, Vera says, "You know what? As much as it is Christmas, and I'd like to treat myself, I'm done with this." She's just gonna take his hand off. Can she just melee attack and take his arm off? Just take it away. Get rid of it. Max sort of stretches his arm out. Are you using a blade? Are, are you using a dagger, or are you using like? I a, have two. I have two dagger, knives. Right? They're kind of like um. They're probably closer to like a boot knife. They're not small by any sense of the term. So wh- what we're gonna see before you make that roll, as the arm gets snapped out by Max, and he's like, like, what, what the fuck? What do you want? To-? It, then Duke steps in, and that immediate struggle that he was giving you, the fighting, trying to pull away, stops entirely. His eyes, his words. They're no longer the folk. The focus is no longer on the trauma he's enduring. Instead, they're on the man that just so calmly walked through those double doors into a dance room with a shattered mirror on his right. Duke, this guy doesn't look remotely familiar to you at all. And you're trying to remember you know, who is this man, but it doesn't ring any bells. But the look on his face says something entirely different. As he strangely just stares at you. Does Vera go to cut his hand off when all of this starts? If, if Duke walks in, she walk? she may make the swing and then she yep. stops right before and goes, stops. Duke, well, so glad you joined us. This person seems to know who you are. Justice is their cry. I'm interested in hearing what he has to say. You don't remember me? Well, 
Go on, Ahab. You found your white whale. Tell me. What injustices have I sewed upon your life? I mean, look familiar to you? I was on the news every fucking night. Begging for my daughter to come home. She never fucking came home. And I've been looking for years. And I finally found you. And you actually feel, Max, him try to let go of the trigger. In that moment. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 no. You like those arms? You like these arms attached to your body? You're not going to do that again, okay? He, you see his tears are welling in his eyes, still not breaking the, uh, the look from Duke. I'm going to take things that are important to you until I get what I am owed. This is your mistake. This is your mistake? You killed my kid! Nothing is important to me anymore. That much is fucking clear, you monster! You seem to be hurting. If I take you all out right now, he, cr he tries again. Nope, yeah, that ain't nice. happening, okay? I'm gonna mesmerize him. Do you have to rouse, though? Uh, I do. I believe it's a second level, right? Yes. Okay, you gain a little hunger. Yes. But his eyes lock with you. None of you feel true faith ever emanate off this guy. Interesting. He never breaks out into prayer. He doesn't wear obvious Christ-like jewelry or any of any religion. But the snow is still gently flowing out the windows. You can see through the moonlight at the end of the hall, past Duke's shoulder as the camera focuses on his face. As everything grows quiet in that moment, his blood thickens, and his eyes are always an ice blue, but Vera, they seem particularly cold in this moment. You have him. You feel his mind melt by just gently pushing it, Duke. I know that you feel... My previous transgressions have wrought disorder unto you, and I apologize for the life that I led before this. While I do not know your name, I care to not know your name. We all have disorders in lives and things that we have to own up to. I fulfilled my fantastic passion, and I will never go back to it. I'm sorry. You will not get to fulfill yours. Your life will end here. Max looks over to Vera and is just sort of like raises one of his brows. It's like, is that is that the call? Have I got permission? Well, Duke turns to walk away. Please, Max. He's frozen in place. Unable to do a damn thing. As much as, once again, I would love to remove a limb or two of his. Oh, alleviate him of his head and get rid of the body. Hmm? So, Max, uh, I assume the the arm with the broken wrist, he's dropped the gun. If you shake it, yeah. even a little, it flops from his broken hand. So, you just shake it and there goes the pistol clattering to the floor as he still blankly stares at Duke, now leaving the doorway and into the hall. And uh, so Max has the hand on the dead man switch. He'll use his free hand, just sort of reach around and snap the neck with the full, the full potence, and of course the lethal body. So I'm doing aggravated damage to mortals. So yeah, you may you may roll that pool if you'd like to. Oh, friend, why but, not? Um, hey? <laughs> it's always fun to roll. Well, sure. But the camera is on the individual, this nameless man, a full frame of his face as he blankly stares in tears trail down both of the corners of his eyes. We can see just the minor movements of a purple arm reach up and grasp the throat, only the top of the knuckle of the index finger. But it isn't before long, as the camera watches, we hear the snap, and the camera hard cuts to the corner of the room as his head logs to the side, and he falls limp in Max's arm. Max, he very quickly fell. You feel his hand loosen though obviously not enough to make the thing go off, and you can very easily now just cut his arm off or twist it off. But before we get to what you do there, Duke, as you walk out of the room, Sean, you've been watching this the whole time. Duke walked in, he saw accusations, he spoke calmly to him, and it seemed to have calmed him, though you do know what his clan and his abilities are. What do we see, Sean, during this entire experience looking like? What are his reactions? 
Well, during the little speech, I think you'd for a moment see Sean look at the gun in his hand and begin to point it towards the back of Duke's head. Hmm. But when he sees that Max is about to snap a man's neck, he has to look away. So You probably, as you turn, Duke, and leave, you actually see the pistol get quickly pocketed, and you hear the snap as Sean me- sheepishly looks to the corner of the room. Walking out of the room, uh, I imagine it takes time for me to cross that, that parlor floor. But on the way out, I'll stop with my side to Sean, never quite looking at him, and express to him, knowing the names of your victims of the previous life only anchors you to that previous life and shows you debts yet to be paid. Also, a bullet to the back of the head wouldn't kill me, Sean. And he just says that as he strides past you, never losing a step, almost as though he knew the exact amount of words he would have before he passed by you. To the very second. What does Sean do? Does he leave with him or does he continue to watch? Uh... He waits for the other two, and he, he just kind of mumbles under his breath. It's just like, I got more victims than you. I fucking bet. And he just pockets the gun. Meanwhile, Sean is being treated to some very wet, ripping sounds as, you know, Max sort of, he actually sort of reached on the top of the guy's head and just twisted it around backwards with just a flick of his wrist. Yeah, uh, and it just snaps and breaks the skin. Yeah, as he lowers the body to the ground, he sort of, again, just, you know, like ripping apart a well-cooked chicken, he just sort of, like, twists the arm off at the elbow and then sort of is carefully removing the fingers while keeping the trigger closed. Okay, now what the hell do I do with this? Oh. When he asks that question, you hear a gentle... Mm. Yeah, Vera goes over to, to the woman. Yeah, uh, and will remove whatever hood she's wearing. Uh, it's, a, it's a burlap sack that's just over her head. Tossed. As you rip the head off, as you rip the burlap sack off, you are stopped there. You are greeted with a sight you've never seen before. Yes, this is the headmistress. Certainly you recognize her. It's been a few years since you've checked in on her, but this is her. But the thing that catches you off guard is the weird wound like slit across her forehead. From here to here. And as she clearly is away, you can see her mouth is stuffed with just cloth and cloth and cloth. You see her eyes kind of start to look up. And she looks around, first seeing Vera. And you're not sure if she recognizes you or not. And then over to Max. And what you would assume would be fear from somebody who is mortal is not at all. As that slit slowly peels itself open like a semi-dry mouth just getting moisture for the first time in a few hours. And as it slowly opens itself, you actually can see a snake-like pupil down long ways, almost expanding, dilating. There's the word I'm looking for. Oh, crap. Opens a little wider before it blinks closed again and open. And as the uh, pupil dilates and shrinks... Eventually she locks on and sees you, Vera. And in that moment, that calm, collected kind of disorientation is immediately turned into what you would perceive as a white, hot hatred. Now you, as far as you know, she doesn't know you. She's she's thought you've been gone for a long, long, long time. Whether she's assumed that you've been dead or you ran off, doesn't really matter. You never really kept that close to tabs. So for her to see you and show a look of recognition, followed by a look of pure anger, might catch you off guard. Now the question is, the two of you who are in here recognize what's sitting in front of you. Wits a cult, please. Just a one. Just a one. But it was a ten. It was a ten. <laughs> I'd be better I'd be better off in politics. Uh <laughs> Max would be the only one that may have had rumors of But no, as you think, you're not quite sure what's in front of you. You've never seen anything with a third eye before. 
Oh boy. What the hell is this? Okay. She goes to speak, and it's just met with garbled mumbles. Not any language, just babbling, but clearly angry babbling. Now Max has the dead man's switch in his hand, and the explosives are on her, right? On, on her, you can see a square outline sitting under her blouse. Okay, uh, here's my pitch. We back out of the room, and I let this thing go. <laughs> Max. It, it, can I tell if she is kindred or kind? Do you have an ability to, beyond just looking at her, at her teeth? You could literally just shove your fingers in her mouth and look to see if there are fangs. I mean, it is Vera. Yeah, I know. I don't know how, how delicate you want to do. I'll grab her jaws and, like, pry her gums back with my nails. So we see, as you grip it, and you kind of push forward, and yeah, you jam in there, just kind of pull back. And you are greeted with two fangs on each side, here and here. Four fangs total. As she kind of holds her mouth open, and she, like, you kind of hold her back, holding her chin, and you see them. The last thing we need is a masquerade breach by blowing up another kindred. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't us. It was the hunter. It was the hunter who did this. Don't you see? Huh? You would set off a bomb in the middle of a boarding school. All right. Or we could take it down to the sewers, and then I could let go of this. You know what's attached to your chest, yes? And I look at this this woman with a third eye. Yeah, yeah, she just nods aggressively. You know what's in my friend's hand. Or your friend's hand. Because he's still holding the other guy's hand, right? <laughs> okay. And she, she nods. My friend here would like to see you blown to bits. It would be an easy finish for you. Nothing personal. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't give Max this gift of the holiday season. She looks over to Max, and she gestures with her bound hands to free them. This could go sideways, Vera. What you call? Vera goes over, and she'll, un uh, like, cut the binds off on her hands. Okay, and, you, and she they lurches forward a little bit as she... We've done business together in the past, and the body of your son showed up on my dance floor tonight. You've caused me a lot of problems, and it's supposed to be a vacation. Hmm? She reaches up to Max, again realizing she tries to speak, but words don't really come forward. Do you allow her to touch you, Max, or no? Uh, Max backs away as she goes to that. Ah, ah, ah. Don't touch the merchandise. She brings her hand back and, like, to show non-aggression. Do you let her? She'll go again if you seem like you come back close. Yeah, all right, all right. And if you let her, eventually she does reach forward and press her bare hand against your chest being shown through the bathrobe. And she just looks at you in the eyes. There's a few moments that pass. It's not that you feel sadness, Max. Sadness isn't something Max has felt in a long while. But there's always that nagging feeling in the back of your mind when you take a mortal life like you do. He was clearly upset and looking for revenge and who hasn't been there before. And he's powerless against you. Never mind four of you. Whoever sent them against or sent you against them. Set him up for failure. And that feeling sits there. We've done it a thousand times. It comes with the job. But there's still a little guilt. But as she looks to you, and you watch the third eye open wider, there's almost a true feeling of sadness for the first time in maybe two decades for you. Did you grieve the loss of your haven and those that you had? Yes. But those were more like a a grievance of possessions. True human guilt is something you have almost completely forgotten until this very moment. It's almost like she pulls it from the depths of your gut and forces it to the front for you to reckon with. Yes, you rationalized his killing and that might have been the right call. But there's still a human inside of you, somewhere. And she just touched it very briefly. And as she pulls her hand back, you see the eye build a tear. 
but not a tear of a clear tear like you would normally, but thick vitae, simply wells, never truly dripping. And she looks around for a moment and grabs the nearby sack and corner, rolls it up and tries to tie it around her to hide the, the eye as best she can in a panic. Now, none of you are at hunger for, correct? No. Okay, so you have no effect, though. Seeing kindred vitae in any form is always tempting. Uh, Max, uh, oh, I should I should mention, of course, Max did change out of the bathroom, so he's in his street clothes. Oh, perfect. So there you go. That's fine. He, he she, she. T- but what what do we see Max do? He, uh, he pulls the scarf from around his neck and uh, just sort of hands it over to her. She gracefully, uh, gratefully rather, kind of takes it from you and ties it almost like a, a, like ties like a makeshift headband. You can still see something is off, but unless you know what you're looking for, it could just look like a cut or a wound to anybody else. Look, uh, we didn't have nothing to do with it, but um, I'm sorry about your son, all right? We got him, uh, we got him back at the club if you want him. She kind of breaks the eyesight with you. The v- looking to Vera again, there's still a clear simmering anger there. But the immediate white-hot hatred is simmered, at the very least. Perhaps just not expecting to see you caught her off guard and weld something you're unaware of. But either way, she then gestures. She goes down to untie her feet with her free hands while looking at both of you as for almost permission. Wait. I walk over and kind of pick her shirt up. Can I pluck the whatever the device is from her? Yes, you could pluck it from her. It's very uh, hastily kind of slapped on and tied the uh, string. Give that to Max so that he has both do- both of them. <laughs> yep. Does anybody have any experience in uh, explosives as in a skill, but weaponry or anything? I got firearms. 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 Maybe that'll work. But we'll just like disarming this thing. I or unless you want to <laughs> yeah. use it to explode. But that is handed to you, Max. You now have a dead man switch and a bomb. Okay. Okay, I, uh, I, I probably got to get rid of this at some point here. And as you say, Vicky, she looks to you. All yes, right. I haven't forgot your name. We'll bring your son by if you'd like. Whatever strange resentment you are holding on to, I do not have time for. More importantly, we just saved you. So I suggest you swallow your pride. When you when you say it with such poignancy, she her eyes dart to you like you dare speak to her like that. And I suggest you let us leave, and we will leave you alone. Her hands go up as though be my guest. You might want to have that looked at, by the way. Vera kind of points to the the hands go down, and she just leans toward you as you walk away. I've never had the joy of plucking a third eye from a kindred skull. (laughs) Maybe next Christmas. Come, Max. We have a bomb to get rid of. uh, He sort of leans into her as he's departing. Uh, Again, my condolences and whatnot, okay? She actually, as you you say that, there's just this soft look she gives you. Completely opposite of the way she looks at Vera, and she nods very softly to you as well as you walk away. And you step out, all of you, scattering amongst. Does Sean say anything to Vera or Max as they leave? What's the plan? Where did you go? He left. First things first, I gotta ditch this somewhere. Uh, Where's... Oh, right. Yeah, what's the plan? What do you want to do with that? Do you want to tuck it in a pond? Do you want to try and disarm it? It wouldn't be a family outing if we didn't have some kind of explosive ending. So maybe we find Duke and go blow something up. I don't think he'd appreciate yeah. getting blown up. There's a couple of ponds I could sink this into in uh, Central Park. We could watch that. Do we tie it to Duke first? Sean, why would we tie it to Duke? No reason. As the three of you begin to walk out and down the uh, fire escape and make your way outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Sean, is there a problem? Nah, he's left. Look, kid, I don't got any great love for Duke Arden. And let's face it, this whole mess is his fault. But uh, we got to stick together, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, instead of blow apart, 
fine. Let me just put this out to you, Sean. Would you rather be in Duke's Coterie, or would you rather be everybody else? I uh, yeah. And as the fog leaves your mouth, and the camera pulls back as you hit the streets, it ushers its way over to Central Park. And as it looks up at the now clearing skies and the snowflakes falling from them, and the moon full, fully filling the sky, and the clock hits midnight, serendipitously, so too do we hear a gentle rumble boom and a very quick, though explosive, water show distantly in Central Park. And as that curious salubri is left in the dance studio, and a hunter being forced to do somebody else's dirty work has been taken care of, our dear Coterie celebrates the rest of Christmas with questions and perhaps a brand new enemy that they'll have to contend with later on. Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy uh, charity stream. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Um, that's it for us. That's it. That's our two hour block. I am that's so glad it. we got through that in two hours. I was really nervous. But, <laughs> Me uh, too. That was a lot. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for listening. Um, we wouldn't be able to even be on the special without all of you, uh, people listening to the podcast. So if you were new, like I said, check it out. It's awesome. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. We will be back. Thank you everyone. Goodbye. Bye everybody. Goodbye everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.